The following is a CSPN Media podcast presentation. Hello, and welcome to Cast a Strong Style. I'm your host, Don DeLorente, and I'm joined by my co-host, Anwar Starwin. What's going on, Anwar? What's up, Don? What's up, people? Uh, I'm good, man. I'm good. Just back to talk about days 8 through 11 of Best of the Super Junior Tournament. We're coming down to the end. Yeah, it is. It's been a hell of a fun tournament. For sure, for sure. Be sure to follow Cast a Strong Style on Twitter, by following us at Cast Strong Style. You can also catch us on the CSPN at CSPN.us. And you can also subscribe to Cast of Strong Style through iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, Stitcher Radio, Spotify, and YouTube. All right, so we're going to start off with day eight. And day eight and nine were very special days in this tournament because both blocks took up both the days. So there were 10 matches a piece on day eight and nine. And we're going to run through those fairly quickly on day eight. El Fantasmo faced off against Ren Narita, the Argentine cutter, and then a top rope splash by Fantasmo got the win. Teton defeated Taka Michinoku with the variation of the Michinoku driver, Robbie Eagles, he fell short to Bushi. Bushi got the win with the MX. Jonathan Gresham, he faced off against Tiger Mask, and he got the win over Tiger Mask with a cradle out of nowhere. Yo took on Doki. Uh, Yo hit the Dragon Suplex, and Yo got the win. Sho, he faced off against Marty Skrull. Sho hit Marty Skrull with the Shock Arrow, and Sho was victorious in that match. In the battle to see who would be the official coach of New Japan. Taguchi cradles up Rocky Romero and picks up the win. And afterwards, Taguchi agrees to kind of be like, you know, assistant coaches with uh, Rocky Romero. So they worked it out. <laughs> Tashi Ishimori, he faced off against Kanamaru. Uh, Kanamaru looks for the whiskey miss, but Ishimori takes the whiskey bottle. The ref sees it, and then Kanemaru gets the small package, and he steals the win over Tashi Ishimori. In our semifinal of the night, Will Osprey versus Bandito. Osprey he heads up top, but he gets cut off. Bandito follows Osprey up top, and he hits a moonsault press, but Osprey he makes the ropes. We get a super kick by Bandino, but Osprey takes advantage of a slight mistake by Bandino, and he hits the Stormbreaker for the win. And then our main event on night eight, Shingo faced off against Dragon Lee. Dragon Lee hits a knee strike and a rebound German. He hits another knee strike and then a reverse Hurricane Rana and another knee strike. And then Shingo, after all of that, kicks out at one. Dragon Lee hits another running knee for a two count. Shingo counters to Descadora and hits last of the dragon. And Shingo remains undefeated in New Japan. So, Mr. Anwar Starwin, you can kind of cherry pick uh, which one of those okay. matches you want to delve in, give a little bit more insight into. I like Tiger Mask more versus Jonathan Grissom. Um, Tiger Mask had him and looked done, but he held on to get the win. I, I love how stiff the match was, and it w- actually went from sportsmanship, and Grissom's surprise win and reaction was great post match. Um, Doki versus Joe was pretty good too. Um, they, even though they kind of killed Doki on commentary, um, Yo winning from under was great. Um, I don't know about sucks in your city though, bro. Um, Marty Scroll versus Show was dope. Um, the, the playing the playing the crowd with the fake ass injury and then trying to like. I like how they kind of just um that that was that was a really good one. The crowd was really into that one match. 
Uh, that's another great match from Billy. Uh, like for me, that was just another example of like Osprey putting the stake down as probably one of the, if not the best wrestler in the world right now. On just on the in ring shit. Um, I really love how even though Bandito lost, he still had the crowd's respect, and at the end they were cheering for him, and I was like, wow. Because Bandito is pretty is really young, and Juice on commentary being in awe of Osprey kind of gives him even more shine. Because Juice is one of the better wrestlers in the world, and Juice, Juice, Juice could be like, yes, I would like to wrestle him someday. So that would be a cool match in G1 if they let William in G1. Dragon Lee versus Shingo. It was great. They brought it, and Dragon Lee was right there with Shingo the whole time. He didn't get bullied or punked out by Shingo and almost pulled it out, but wasn't quite enough ready to take out the dragon. So, no shame to lose a Shingo, because Shingo was that dude. Currently, yes, he is. He is a force to be reckoned with. Ridiculous. <laughs> we shift over to day nine. Show, he got the win with the shock arrow over Tiger Mask. Will Ospreay defeated Ren Narita with the Oz Cutter. Marty Skrull hits the Black Plague, and he gets the win over Kanamaru. Robbie Eagles, he bounces back, and he puts the Ron Miller special on Doki, and Doki taps out. Robbie Eagles gets the win in their matchup. Shingo, he defeated Takamichinoku with the Last of the Dragon for the win. Bandino, he hits the 21 plex and he gets a win over Taguchi. In a match that I really liked, Taiji Ishimori, he connected with the Bloody Cross to defeat Jonathan Gresham. Bushi, he hits the MX and he picks up the win over Yo. Dragon Lee versus Teton. The Descador is countered and Teton hits the Samoan drop before two count. We get a knee strike by Dragon Lee and a Brain Buster follows for another two count. We hit a knee strike and reverse Rana and another knee strike and that gets a two count and then Dragon Lee gets the win when he hits Descanadora over Teton. And then a match that came out of nowhere for its high quality. Rocky Romero puts the armbar submission Onto El Fantasmo and Rocky Romero picks up the win. What an emotional scene to end night nine as Rocky Romero got an upset victory over El Fantasmo in the main event. I don't know if we could say it's that surprising with Rocky at this point in time after what he's been doing throughout this tournament. He already had a great match with Osprey. This is just another example of that. The storytelling that they did in the ring and with the crowd's reception or reaction to it was pretty great, too, as well as just, like, it's like at that point in time, you're like, there's no way Rocky beats Alpha Tasmo, but he did, and, and, and through beating him, opened up a lane for his fellow Chaos stablemate to actually win the block, so it, they helped each other, even though they're not necessarily helping each other trying to do that, but it, it works out. And it's a cool little story on element. And I also like within that match, I, I keep forgetting that actually Rocky was Black Tiger and he was at, is actually a former IWGP champion, single champion. So when Rocky gives us commentary on certain stuff, maybe people would that be like, oh, he's a sexy man. Uh, maybe pay more attention because this man got so much tenure and has done so much within that company. And not just that company, always back in the day. If you don't know, go do your history. I remember, the, I think it was the No Remorse Corp. I think it was him, David Richards, and I think, I think um, Roger Stone was in there. I can't remember. I was like, we're talking like 11, 12 years ago. But yeah, man, Rocky is the man. And I, I dug Dragon Lee versus Teton. It felt like he was at home versus Dragon Lee. Like unlike other anybody else, because they can work the similar styles, and when you work with people that know you and their friends, you can get some of the best stuff, and it showed through on that match. Um, 
um, I love Osprey versus Ren Narita. It's just like it just shows you how the growth of Nar- Narita within that match and his fire fire and in- encounters and whatnot. And it just shows that if you get in the ring with Osprey at this point, he's gonna do the best to make you look great, and they all have a great match. So, I mean, that was dope. Let's just see what else. Uh, I I I got a good laugh off of Scroll versus Tanamaru because <laughs> they were doing such mischief. Shingo versus Taka like that. Shingo like Shingo just kind of motivated Taka to pull out like his best effort from the tournament, in my opinion. And it was just, that was just another dope match. Yeah, oh, those were the matches that stood out for me on that that night. Yeah, I was a really big fan of Takamichi Noku's effort as well. He seemed to really push uh, Shingo in that match I, a lot more than I think Shingo expected to get pushed. Yeah, yeah, and he brought out the Tai Tai Godojo old school <laughs> Yeah, he with did. The red, with the blue shorts. I was like, what? <laughs> like, damn, that was cool. He brought, he brought it back. So we'll switch over to day 10. Day 10, we went back to our regular format of just five matches. On the card. Five matches? No, 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 no. Day 10 has a lot of matches. It's two. I'm sorry. I lied. So let me go back to the top here for day 10. Where we had Taguchi. He defeated Ren Narita with the ankle lock. Jonathan Gresham. He defeats Kanemaru with the octopus hold. He picks up the win. Rocky Romero. He gets the hoverboard lock. He transitions it into the armbar, and he defeats Doki. We have uh, Marty Skrull. He defeated Teton in their match. Shingo defeated Tiger Mask with the Last of the Dragon. El Phantasmo. He falls to Yo because Yo gets the five-star clutch and pins him, shockingly. Will Ospreay and Robbie Eagles. Will Ospreay uh, gets the 450 on the knees by Robbie Eagles. Robbie Eagles follows it up with the Ron Miller special. And Will Ospreay has to tap out. Sho versus Tashi Ishimori. Sho counters the bloody cross and looks for the shock arrow. But Ishimori escapes and Sho follows with the knee strike. Shock arrow is then countered into the bloody cross. And Taji Ishimori, he gets the win. Standouts for you in uh, day ten. Okay. Well, did did Al Fantasmo fight on, fight Yo on that card? That was yes. Okay. Okay. Nah, my my notes are all over the place. Um, I like Teton versus Marty Scroll. Um, I Teton he lost. Like most of us expected, but I enjoyed his effort within that match. Um, right. Uh, Baby though versus Bushi was good. I was surprised at how hot Bushi is going, getting it lately in this tournament. <laughs> it's like he started off with taking L's, and then he's just been all man on fucking fire lately. Shingo versus Tiger Mask Four was dope because he actually made you think that Tiger Mask could actually beat him. <laughs> and I like I like how Tiger used that possum shit on him at the start of the match, and was keep using strategy crafty shit on him. But he still lost, but it was still dope. Um, I I I, I just enjoyed El Fantasmo losing the yo because he was being a fucking dickhead, and then being a dickhead backfired on him. <laughs> lost the, he lost the three two thirds of Rungi three K in back to back night. Couldn't happen to a better guy. Um Robbie Eagles versus Osprey was everything I expected and I I probably will go out of my way and look up their two thousand seventeen and two thousand eighteen singles matches. It definitely feels like Robbie Eagles at some point will get the hell up out of Bullet Club because his he's not a rule breaker. It's just He's a he, he's he's in a group of rule breakers, but he isn't a rule breaker. And at some point, if I, I like the idea that someone said, I think it was on Super J or somebody, that they said like they could totally see that 
like Robbie Eagles could potentially take over that junior heavyweight spot in chaos and like while that would allow Will to move up to like like main event. You know? That's a possibility. Yeah, that's a good that's that'll be a good trade. It'll be a good possibility sometime, man. I love the times up video and Juice got so fucking mad. <laughs> It cut that fire from was like, I know who you are. I'm not that guy anymore. Don't think you can do what you did to me back in the day. And I think he's like, oh, he's referencing probably like maybe somewhere in the independence or like NXT or something because they were NXT. FCW. At the same time, yep. Yeah. So if you know the timeline, I was like, that, that's what he's probably talking about. I'm not that guy no more. You think you're gonna get, I'm going to be easy and I'm, nope. And for people that don't know, the dude that was with the videos fucking with with um Juice, it's Moxley. <laughs> yep. Is that yeah, Moxley mama? out here, man. Moxley out here, out here living his best life, fucking with people, running up, running, running up on Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho after a match and whooping their ass. <laughs> having he having a great week, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. He's 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 doing it big. He's uh, let's see, he was the uh, biggest. Biggest surprise at All In. Then it, uh, it was revealed that he's going to be the the mystery man in the uh, in all the vignettes. And then he went on Chris Jericho's podcast and totally told everybody what we've probably been thinking. But he confirmed it for us that Vince McMahon is old and he has lost his creative fastball. <laughs> yeah, man. So I, those those were the standout matches of that night for me. All right, so now we move on to night 11, where Marty Skrull defeated Takamichinoku due to forfeit because Takamichinoku injured his foot and he is going to be out for the rest of the tournament. So hopefully he gets well soon. Show versus Teton. Teton hits a Hurricane Rada and a Cradle for a two count. Teton rolls for an arm bar. Show fights and makes the ropes. We get a super kick by Teton, but Show hits a power driver for a two. Show hits the shock arrow, and Show gets the win. Taiji Ishimori, he faced off against Tiger Mask. Tiger Mask fights off the bloody cross. He hits knee strikes and then gets the crucifix for a two count. Ishimori follows with knee strikes and covers for a two. The LaBelle lock follows, but Tiger Mask rolls. He's still trapped, and Tiger Mask eventually has to tap out as Taiji Ishimori gets the win. Shingo versus Jonathan Gresham. The pumping bomber connects and it gets a two count. Gresham counters last of the dragon into a two cradle for his own two count. Gresham goes back to the arm and the octopus hole follows. Shingo fights. He gets out of the octopus hole and he hits the last of the dragon and Shingo gets the win. Dragon Lee, he faced off against Kanamaru. We get a knee strike by Dragon Lee for two. Dragon Lee takes out Taichi. He drops the knee pad and he drills Kanamaru with another knee. And then he hits Desna, Desna Kadorva and Dragon Lee gets the win. So before you go in, they give you the updated standings. After 11 days in the A block, it's basically down to two guys. Shingo Takagi and Taji Ishimori. Shingo is undefeated at 8 and 0 in the tournament. Taji Ishimori is 7 and 1 and they face each other in the last night of the A block matches. Shingo has 16 points, Taji Ishimori has 14 points. And then in the B block, as of day 11, it was a four-way tie between El Fantasmo, Will Ospreay, Taguchi, and Robbie Eagles. They all have 10 points. They all have won five matches and lost two. Fantasmo got the tiebreaker on Eagles and Osprey. Right. I forgot about like night ten in like Show versus Taji Ishimori, which was another awesome match. And I love the shit talking Ishimori did post match about chopping down the giant. It's awesome how they've built up this tournament for these two guys to be on this collision course between each other. Oh, man. I, even with Ishimori hurt, I know he's going to do his damnedest to like have a great match. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I, I expect nothing less than a barn burner between those two. Yeah, man. That's going to be fun to wake up to tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, that is. I think, yeah, I think it is tomorrow. 
Yeah, that's going to be fun to walk up to, to tomorrow. Because as far it, as night take 11, a break, I think, after tomorrow. Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. I think they have a date on June 1st. Okay. I'm not, I'm not sure, though. Um, as far as night 11 matches, I dug Connemara versus Dragon League because the heel master shit was, was was making me amusing me. <laughs> I mean, I kind of like that heel master shirt, so I might get that and do heel shit. Uh, yeah, like that was pretty. Like, I like that match, and I like um Shingo versus Grisham. Like, like Grisham put pulled out everything he could, but it was just not enough to take out Shingo. But I like the contrast of styles between both. The uh, it was cool. Yeah, that was a very fun uh, night of wrestling. Um, even the undercard was really good. Mm. I enjoyed the tag team matches on there. I actually watched all of that. You better than me, bro. I haven't watched none of the undercards. Not one of them. At some point, like after the tournament, because there's going to be less events in June, I'll probably just go back and just watch those matches, those those um tag matches. But I was like, man. I don't, I don't really want to. Like, because I know the story lines and developments and it gives even more, more juice to matches and stuff. Right. I just, sometimes I just don't want to watch all them damn multi man matches. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that one was really good. So, it's been an awesome tournament so far. Who would you say would be your MVP uh, through 11 nights? Shingo. Shingo. Shingo and Osprey are the MVPs in my opinion. Those are like, and you could like throw Rocky in there too because he be doing so. He be having some really entertaining matches. Right. So like, those are the people that stand out. Phantasmo stands out in the way that he's a great heel that motherfuckers want to boo and don't like. So because I don't, I don't, I don't like Phantasmo. I think he's a dickhead. I mean, just just me calling him a dickhead lets you know I don't like him right now. And who would you say has uh, made the most of their opportunity? Robbie Eagles. If you if you think of Robbie Eagles before this tournament, and think of him after watching him perform. Robbie Eagles is an awesome wrestler, man. Definitely, if if, if things fall into place, I could definitely see him becoming like. IWGP Intercontinental Champ, like the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion at some point. I could definitely see him become an IWGP Junior Tag Team Champion some days, probably with um, Ishimori. That would because they already have experience wrestling with each other, so that that would be a good tag team, and that would be a good spot for them for now. Well, you know they got to put tag teams together for the uh, Junior Tag League at the uh, end I mean, of the year. They, yeah, they were t- well, they were Junior Tag. Tag league together last year too. So, yep. So, it's always that's the fun thing about New Japan, the tournaments and the different you know little kind of offshoot things they do during the year to spice things up. So it's not always just you know the same redundancy. I really like that. NBA is actually yeah. talking about trying to incorporate some kind of mid season type tournament type stuff going on. Oh wow! That's yeah, crazy. trying to follow New Japan, man. <laughs> So at this point, Anwar, any uh, anything else you'd like to mention before you uh, you know go on to your shout outs and thank yous? Mm, nothing. I just I would say, all right, just look at how New Japan like puts people in position, puts people in position to um to 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 like even if they're not the focal point, they still have importance and. Because they have created direction for their people. Like Nar- Narita is, is a young dude, and he's just grown. But it it's obvious they have he's going to be something special in the future. So, yeah. I think Ren Narita has some of the most entertaining matches because the way they structure him, he gets you know just enough offense where he's not totally fighting from underneath. And the near falls are really good near falls. Yeah, definitely, because you're just waiting for him to win, and, and he just barely loses. And that overhead belly-to-belly belly is, is an amazing move. Yeah, 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 it is. All right, Anwar, so give the people your shout-outs and thank-yous. Shout-out Jupiter Chulip. 
shout out Madame Lazette, shout out Awards Lito, stop watching all that WWE, watch some New Japan girl, uh-huh. uh, shout out to everybody else who's cool and makes, makes wrestling fun. I appreciate y'all, and shout out to Don coming off of the bed like Willis Reed trying to put this podcast out, because if it wasn't me and I was coughing like that, you would not be getting no podcast this week. <laughs> I'm a trooper, man. I've got a I've got a Russell Cash streak of 238 consecutive weeks to hold up, man. God damn, yeah, Locker, man. man. I see, I see you, Lou Gerd. Yeah, man. Yeah. So I just like to give a shout out to you, Anwar, for being able to jump on and working with me through my sickness to, uh, to get this recorded. Give a big shout out to Terry's boy who's up early with us, uh, tweeting and using the hashtag. We definitely appreciate it. Big shout out hey, to boy, Moto. Man. Big shout out to the ladies over on the Forever Young cast. Big shout out to everybody who listens to the Razzlecast in general. Um, we've got merch now over on for the Razzlecast. So teespring.com forward slash stores forward slash CSPN. Pick up a I'm a Didi Jonet guy t-shirt or a raw ah. ass mug or something. Just go buy something, please. Thank you. Um, mm-hmm. Check out the Patreon page. Over on the Patreon page this week, you'll be able to hear Anwar give his thoughts on Double or Nothing, uh, what the what he liked about the event, what he saw uh, uh, from the event. So that's patreon.com forward slash CSPN Media. Sign up to become a Backstage Pass member and get access to the Dark Match and all of our exclusive content over on uh, the Patreon page. And also support our sponsors, Amazon.com. You can also go over there through CSPN.us, buy something for your dad for Father's Day. Some of your purchase will come back to the CSPN to help keep the podcast free each and every week. So there's many ways you can support us, but please support the CSPN, the WrestleCast, and Cast a Strong Style. So for my co-host, Anwar Starwin, I'm your host, Don DeLorente, and this has been Cast of Strong Style. Strong style.